Hello, my friends. I'm Rick, and over in the corner is Little Missy, and this is your seat at the table. In a nutshell, Little Missy's over there crying every now and then, so if you hear her cry, she's a little stray that we picked up uh, last week or a week and a half ago, and uh, because she's so rambunctious, she's currently in a cat carrier over here by the corner, and wishing, yes, you want to get out, don't you? Yes, you want to climb up here and bounce all over the table and jump on my laptop. I know how that is. Uh, we're, she's a rescue kissy, kitty. We're trying to help her. She's come to us very, very malnutri- uh She starved. She was very, very. She's still very dirty. Then we're feeding her four, three, four times a day. She got plenty of fresh water now. We're giving her dewormer. We're hoping to get some weight on her, and then we'll take her to the ARL so we can get her, have her, uh, get her shots and get her fixed and stuff. And then at that point, we'll have to decide what to do with her. I mean, it's so hard to want to just give these cats up. I mean, I'm a cat person. I know it. Uh, but at the same time, we have a, there is a sane limit to how many kids you can actually look after, and we are that, uh, there and then some. So uh, uh, it's so hard to just, you know, you, 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 you develop an attachment anyway. You don't want to care about that. I just wanted to let you know who's crying in the corner. So we are looking at the Campaign Source Book and Catacomb Guide. This is a book that I have read a lot back in the day and every now and then I pulled it off the shelf in the decade since to to go through and look at something or to remind myself of something because when we talk about rules and crunch there's a lot of crunch but there's a lot of, of uh, I would call secondary rules that are there because you need them in the way that some common sense things really actually should be written in stone because otherwise people go oh no this is you know, don't put you know, you know don't put your finger in a light socket hello you really need to have a warning on the devices that you don't put your finger in it but somebody inevitably will do something full-hearted because they don't buy into it they don't believe the the science or the people who knowledge who understand and made the efforts to figure out stuff so you don't have to right you know that's called that's a part of faith too yes it is let me see yes it is so campaign source book one of the things i i've been after i picked this book up and i spent a, a couple weeks the last few weeks going through it and rereading a lot of it I look at everything in here and I think, geez, this is, these are little quippets that I, I'm really tempted. If I had time to do a lot of little, really, really quick videos, I, this was a book I would tap. Otherwise, uh, I'm, I might be writing some of these uh, section by section and putting them on my uh my uh, cup of coffee website. I know. I know. I put it out there. I've only got one guy that's a, that's that's supporting it, and uh, and and uh, I haven't posted anything on a while. In a, it's in a long while on the channel because nobody or on the site because nobody ever goes to it. No, I, I get no input, no Im information, nobody's comments, nothing. And uh, you don't have to be a member and give me three bucks a month. You don't have to donate money. You don't actually have to give me nothing. But you, to go to the site, you can go to the site and read the crap that's there. I mean, r currently right now, it's just sections. Uh, I was I was laying out uh, uh, my one of my would-be novels piece by piece, which is probably why nobody gives a damn about it. But that's that's fine. I get you. Not a problem. So we look at this, and the reason I'm blabbering about it, this book here, right, you look at the chapter contents, really does not does not do it justice. Beginner introduction, logistics of play, styles of play, pacing in theater, the, theatrics, use of judgment, creating the campaign, creating the world, maps and map making, creating the the adventure, making NPCs live, dungeon settings, dungeon campaigns, generic dungeons, etc., typical map symbols and forced perspective macro so this if you've never run a game in your world in your life you've never uh, uh, been a, a game master or storyteller and you really want to and you want to have a working idea of some good good advice and good knowledge and, and more important stuff that most of us hardcore players have been following in some variation for decades this is one of these rare books that are, that's what this would be really good for and and i don't know that you know, the material crops up here and there and other stuff grant you but i've never seen another comp, uh, source book uh, completely as depth in this as this one is on the topic although we there are others and for other game systems that do exist and uh, i think i have at least reviewed one of them to be honest so we're talking game etiquette be prepared hosting a game courtesy to the host courtesy to others 
pre-rolling characters, opening ceremonies, refreshments, distractions, be kind to the DM. See, so distractions, anything that doesn't add to the playing of the game will detract from it. Where possible, eliminate all outside distractions. It is difficult to concentrate on role playing while a ball game where loud music is going on in the background. If a player can't concentrate on the game because he is more interested in a, in a distraction, suggest that he leave and let the other players play, enjoy the game. For some gamers, young children, particularly their own, can be a distraction. If young children must be present during the game session, the players may wish to contribute towards the hiring of a babysitter. The resulting piece may be well worth the price. So be kind to the DM. Be kind to the players. You be, may or may not be surprised how often that is something you have to remind people. You know, we are here as a social, as a social contract. Let's try to behave like we want to be here. <clears throat> right and don't be rude and then we have the next section administrative dm one world many dms one player many characters visitors from other worlds new players hosting one shots so they covered a lot of topics you know visitors from other worlds it happens to every dm and every campaign at least once a new player joins the group and wants to bring blah 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 his 14th level blah blah uh with him how should the dm decide the matter there are no hard rules and it can be a tough call. Several rules or or thumb well, rules of thumb can be applied to help the DM make the decision. First, ask to see the incoming character's record sheet and any applicable notes. Everything the character possesses should be detailed here. If the incoming character's experience level is much higher than the rest of the characters, do not allow the transfer. Stripping a player's favorite character of hard-earned or otherwise experience can only cause grief. Tell him the character must wait on the, in the wings until the other PCs reach the, his power level and have the new player create a new character. Or either disallow characters with non-standard character classes, those not covered by the official AD&D game rules, for example, or require that an incoming character adopt a standard character class. Disallow non-standard magical items, the logic being that the physical laws of the two prime material planes are not similar enough to allow the new magic items to function. This allows the DM to avoid any possibility of padding the magic item with extra powers that the player's original DM would be surprised to find or to have a player purposely overlook any intended curses. Disallow any magical or technological items that would be unbalanced a game. So, how often have you had somebody go, well, wouldn't it be fun if uh, we were to be, you know, I don't know, transferred to another world, blah, blah, blah. So you yourself in modern day uh, tricked out like your commando loaded bear uh, for 10, day, 10 days in the field and enough uh, ammo with for your assault rifle to mow down an army, gets finds and wakes up in, uh, I don't know, Rome and uh, all that all their knowledge and power and equipment they got with them puts them at a massive advantage over their uh, the, the natives that makes it no a balance so new players hosting one shots all right general delivery don't manipulate never favor the characters stuff the good stuff a dm should know what well, dungeon mastering or game mastering storyteller 101 right don't manipulate the player don't manipulate your players. Don't favor one player's character over the others. Never punish the characters. Don't make don't go out of your way to be vindictive or 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 damaging that's not related to game play. Never choose sides. You are the referee, you are the the non-participant on the table. As the dungeon master, your job is to moderate the game and to present the settings and, and, and resolve the situations as they occur based on what your players determine, not the other way around. Always maintain a game balance. Then we get into series of play. The traditional hack and slash. We were talking about hack and slash in 1990, dude. I mean, this is not new. This is old. This is old stuff. This is old material. The thinker, the righteous role player, the story, the historical simulation, the silly game, the Monty Hall. Warning about Monty Halls. I've been preaching this for decades. The novel style of play. 
The DM has a great idea for an adventure, and, and unfortunately, he often already knows the outcome. He uses the player characters to write the scenes for his great American fantasy novel. I am terribly guilty of this one. I have done this numerous times. This is this is the truth. If you look at the seven would-be novels that I have in manuscripts, five of them are mostly based off of these Stellar Frontiers came, uh, games that I was running with my buddy, uh, Shannon. And we, we co-wrote the story for his campaign. And it turned into these massive tomes of, of work that that actually, with a little with a little bit of uh, uh, editorial work and and some rewriting, actually has some damn good stories to it. Uh, it's they're novels. So anyway, that's my concept, my idea of of. You know, we get into this uh, a couple times here, not a few months back. Uh, there's a there's a, a, a website, a name a guy named Shell Shonen or whatever, however it's pronounced, and he is an extremely opinionated individual, and that's fine, right? Uh, his big gig is on his channel is basically reviewing everybody else's stuff with his little window up here in the corner, so he can sit there and critique and 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 make fun of and uh, lambast whatever the subject material of the video he's he's commenting on. And I don't always agree with that methodology. I don't like the attitude sometimes that comes across, but that's my personal, that's just my personal issue. That said, um, we often, and other, a couple other people associated with his channel, associated, that I've met through his channel, are big, big uh, uh, proponents for the story, the story style, where you immerse yourself in character to the point where you should never have to roll dice or be told to roll, rarely, rarely be told to roll dice, and you should never ask any kind of mechanic-based question <clears throat> at the table. We want total immersion, theater of the mind, which means the fewer props on the table the better the more that you involve and you you your characters become you become the characters at the table you talk you act you think as if you're the characters at the table so if there's a situation you want to resolve it your character would try to resolve that without explaining I'm going to do it unless they think they need to turn to one of their compa companions in their location and go hey general what if we do this I want to do this and then while I'm while, you know and then my character turns around and goes over and starts to fiddle this while I'm talking to the other guy going you know I think this is what we need to do and and, and this is theater of the mind in, in some aspects so this is the same thing here when we call novel style of play I, I talk about in when I do the rare play by mail or play by post games. I really like those in the D&D Beyond because I was able to, ha with, with, with the right people, we were able to create a, a novel worthy story that was our campaign or was our game. We were playing in character as much as possible. And then I would edit those things and I would have a open thread, which is basically the story where everybody's opinions and comments and, and actions are edited and put it together where we're taking out what little, what, what non, uh, uh, you know, non in character material that was available, that was there. And so that you could read it and it was reading like a, a book and it, 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 like any play by post, uh, mostly you get players that don't post on a daily basis, then it could be once a week. Well, it takes a lot longer to run a, 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 any kind of game that way than you would at a table or, or virtually. So, I mean, it's just the way it goes. So we got uh, the war gamer, political play, you know, the, the, the eccentric, how to prepare, you know, scenario one, scenario two, background, scenario planning, characters, etc. Be prepared. Allow time to design. Get organized. Know thy stuff. Establish a background. Your changing world. The passage of time. A note on alternate scenarios. Right. It just goes through. Wing it. Prayer preparation. Pacing the play. You see where I'm, why I get so worked up over a book like this? This. It's just. It's just. There's so much material here uh, you know, talking about things that we take for granted. We don't think about it. Uh, get a care, get the pair, players moving. Create unusual puzzles. Are the dead or alive? Comic relief. Keep things lively. Encourage rapid play. Avoid splitting up the group. Plan breaks. Know when to quit. 
scripting an adventure, building a dramatic environment, playing the pieces, the props, the mood music, smells, player handouts, suspense and disinformation, misperceptions, loose li lips, shink, ships, messy maps, magical misinformation, you talk too much, that's be me too, you can tell that in my videos, fear and loathing, the funny haha, -ha. DMing in full color, setting the scene, effective settings, there was an there was this episode uh, of uh, of uh, the Big Bang Theory where the guys are all sitting around and they're playing Dungeons and Dragons. I I, I believe it was Dungeons and Dragons, and uh, Sheldon, of course, always wants to be the DM. Always wants to be the man in charge, man of the rules, you know, the ultimate rules doctor. But he's so dry. He's very boring to actually sit around the table as he as he does what he does. So instead of him, uh, oh, and I can picture the idiot's face, the engineer, boy, uh, engineer guy, what, the, what was his name? Anyway, he takes over, and he's a natural storyteller, a natural buffoon, a natural uh, uh, person for lampooning. And so he goes into character and voices and, and all kinds of details and stuff like that to just blows the other guys away. You know, that's the difference. There's the key difference between that and this, right? How can you, not most of us, it's just like the theater of the mind. The majority of us are, are, are going to be hard pressed to ever hold that line. We are not professional actors. We're not thespians uh, and, and we're not that driven. And in some part, and I've had this discussion on that channel. I've had this discussion with other people before too. I mean, we're just, we're just looking at this from the perspective of what does it take to run a good game? Does everybody enjoy themselves? Doesn't have to be a fantastic, but you know, side rip and fun and, and, and frivolity every time you get together. But if it's if they're looking forward to coming back to the next time, that's a good day. That's a good win. Three. A lot of us, especially the dungeon masters, this is something players forget a lot because they're not the crazy SOBs going out and buying book after book after book after book after book after book after book and why do we buy why are why is the the largest percentage of the purchases made by the smallest percentage of the people playing why well in part we like the mechanics we like the world building we like the material that we acquire and we want to integrate it we want to utilize it sometimes that involves including having those technical discussions at the table while we discuss whether or not Olaf over there can flip that can flip that uh, that that wagon on its uh, on its side and and uh, and throw the and throw the mule halfway across the courtyard or not do we sit there and just do it and play it out as it goes because that's how it's supposed to go but sometimes we get down to that oh, well what if he does this and how can he cheat that and we're looking for that spectacular one shot that's going to take all of 30 seconds or three seconds half of a round in the game actually and we'll spend what 30 minutes of real world time establishing the the the, the mechanics for the story and I don't speak for everybody, speak for me, but I enjoy that part too. As long as we don't get bogged down in into debates and arguments over it. See, that's the, always been, the, at the end of the day, whoever's in charge of the campaign, the game table, is the person that, that gets the final call on that. And we respect that as part of the social agreement that we've established with our fellow players and the person running the show and vice versa. It's all kind of goes out. So setting the scene in effective settings, ineffective effective settings, ineffective settings, you know, presenting NPCs, making dramatic encounters that the, the just, we're just going, ban game speak. Oh my God, I can do a whole video on this. And I think I have, I mean, you'd have to go deep back into the, into the archive to find it. But I think I, this is something, uh, one topic uh, that, I, that I've done. So uh, when the rules get in the way, character mortality, alternates to, to dying, fudging or constructive cheating. This subject set off more people than at the table than anything else for the most part that I can think of. It's whether or not a, that the, the dungeon master should fudge dice, should bend a roll. 
or should. See, that, that was the real, yes, yes, little missy, yes, I know. Well, you're fine. Well, just a little longer. Well, yeah, I got a couple more of these I want to do. Yeah. And and then next weekend, yeah, he's got to work on his uh, the Stellar Frontier stuff because I've, I ain't got nothing to post this week. Yeah, and that one takes longer to do. So hopefully we'll be able to. Yes, you just. Oh, you're just happy in there. Yeah, that's a good pussy. Yes, you're a good kitty. Yeah, I come, all right. Yeah, good pussy. Yes, you're a good pussy. As you are. So anyway, um, I get off track of what I'm thinking, right? Fudging or constructive cheating. You know, your players go through some grand adventure. And they're you're in the groove, and the story's flowing, and everybody's having fun, and everybody's dialed in, and we're all in tension on this, and we get to something that's something that's just a horrible, terrible flaw. It's just shouldn't have happened, and it's catastrophic. Or you tweak it so it just is a near miss, or it's not that it's it's horrible, but and and hard, but not devastating. And this was one of the reasons to have the DM guy or the the dungeon master's uh, 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 shield. You know, I mean the the uh, oh geez, I know what I'm thinking. Of. Uh, oh, for the love of Pete! Anyway, we have the the blind up, and you can toss your dice behind it, and your players don't know what you're doing. So you can you can make adjustments to those dice rolls and make sure something god awful catastrophic doesn't happen. Something stupid. Right, Joe. Joe manage, uh, Olaf manages to do this, and then he trips and and, uh, and and has a heart attack. Oof! Or hits his head and and bleeds out. Oof! Really? That's kind of terrible. That's a terrible thing to happen to that. Such such a, uh, you know, everything was going well, and then this. Gee, you know, no. Th then that's a judgment call. That's a judgment call. Whether or not you want to go that route, and I've I've done I've been cold blooded and said this is the rules, this is the results, and I have been way over compensating where I'm like oh I don't want I want the fun to keep going, uh, the, uh, it never happened, or you know I don't know, uh, Didi so and so's avatar shows up and squashes the other the the, the bugbear like a bug, uh, it, it, it's a matter of the slippery slope. Good taste and good French, you know, good time and and good play versus uh, you know, to total chaos and a true chance. And that's one of the reasons we throw dice is to create that effort. On the other hand, if the player tosses the dice and it's catastrophic, it's a little harder to twist the rules. Then, at that point, we can stop and pause and and have a conversation between the adults at the table and say is this really the outcome we want to happen should we go ahead and re-roll to see what happens it's the same it, it's in a similar venue when we talk about the the you're rolling a natural one natural one is a terrible thing it can be a horrible thing but it can also be an opportunity and i have utilized many many of our alternate crunch rule sets that are in there to mitigate situations like that and as an example i have had uh, uh, scenarios where a somebody will roll a natural one or there's a catastrophic roll that's taking place behind the the, the dm screen I told you i remember what the hell the damn thing is and uh to adjust it so it's not devastating and ending basically putting an end to the campaign of the game altogether, and we have to completely start all over again uh is to uh tweak that because it, because it it does do good, you know. It is a good thing to do at that point. The the it's so it's so hard to, to make that call sometimes, and, and you want to be following the the mechanics of the game. And at the same time, you know, it, it's like I said, it's a something that needs a, a little deeper dive. On. So interpreting the law, leaving the rules behind. See, and you'll know, leaving the rules behind, suddenly we get into uh, almost two and a half pages of discussing that. Danger, danger, danger. See, we've been promoting the concept of slipping free of the rules for a better game. Yet game freedom has a darker side. There is a risk involved in breaking the rules. Realize that there are times during a game when dice are rolling and rules adherence must be followed. 
Well, the DM may have wandered. Oh, I know where I was. I got trapped. So on a, nat on, a, on a natural one, as an example, one of the common things I have I utilized is I don't want somebody to go and get, oh, well, I'm just going to take it. I'm going to get a naturally. The other critter gets a massive hit on me or something. Uh, I make a little micro charts all the time. Maybe I'll toss to see some random ideas of random results that could be bad and to, to break things up and more importantly to, to spice things up. So this is one of those reasons if you go back into the DM guide or the player's handbook and some areas of other source books, there are literally uh, rules on hardness for your weapons, what it takes for something to, for a sword to break that happens in the in media in 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 the movies and the novels all you know quite a bit so why not have it happen at the table somebody gets a horrible a horrible event roll and maybe the whole event roll is that their their most favorite sword just got broken you know or damaged beyond repair or whatever see it's a matter of, of being creative and trying to uh, to adapt without being going over the overboard. So what they're warning here, though, is by foregoing the rule set, by constantly winking and nodding, you're you're reducing the effectiveness of all the rules over time. You're also changing the mechanic, uh, the changing the flavor of the game itself. And if you're good with that and your players are okay with it, then fine. So we go on to you know presuming the presuming the players are the heroes. Why are they? Finally, keep in mind that player characters are supposed to be the heroes. They are unusual persons whose skill and ability stand head and shoulders above the normal men, figuratively speaking, in the case of the dwarves. They should be able to perform heroic actions without worrying about fussy details about their activities. This is a topic that comes up a lot in the how-tos and what-tos and how to be a good uh, game master, etc. It's one of those things It is remembering that the players are characters the characters are representations of something that's slightly above the standard for the setting for the world so these people should if, if you know the miraculous happens and the the individual manages to uh, avoid sudden death because the opponent's sword snapped in half uh, or uh, the, and then the character is able to snatch up that the broken hilt and kill his opponent with it just saying right so when so presuming they're healed, when reason fails. If the set of rules could be written to cover every situation possibly, it was resemble a law library. So back, basic presumptions. Back to that thing about what do we do and how do we apply it and whether or not it's applicable. And this is in part leads to even more rules and sub rules, which adds to the crunch of any given game. So once again, and I, I'm an advocate of crunch, and I have been my whole life, and, I, and my argument is, in order to have the, the smooth, streamlined system that everybody dreams to have, somebody had to bite, their, bite the, the crunch and chew their way through it. Somebody had to come up with everything they can possibly imagine, and then some. Because at that point, we can go get, uh, look at them and refine them and, and discard them and include them and become the much more... Uh, sophisticated players and game masters that we are striving to be so we got super characters changing realities rules lawyers player personalities off nights inter-party treachery and backstab uh, player feuds pettiness things that crop up me against them mentality experts know-it-alls when player characters cheat or when players cheat when dms cheat there's a big difference between fudging a dice roll to save the party or to make sure that the, 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 the thing that needs to happen is achieved. And it's a whole other thing to purposely go through and tweak stuff and change stuff on the fly so your characters lose, so the players don't get the, don't get the MacGuffin or they get too much MacGuffin, they get too much Monte Hall. So, you know, there's a big difference between the, the, the judicial tweak of something to keep the game flowing and game fun and outright dis nefarious behavior or stuff. So that just goes into saying rudeness when nature calls. He's dead, Jim. Sleeping beauty, no place like home. Enter the Bermuda Triangle. Polymorph into an NPC. Changing hands. Shut up, you're dead. Never say impossible. Overdone independent action. No, wait, I changed my mind. Uh, you know, I mean, Jesus, I'm only halfway through this book. Halfway through this book. But one thing that I really get a kick out of it, though, is when it says the campaign source book and catacomb guide. 
truth is there's very little catacomb in here and almost nothing about actual campaigns i mean there's a little bit back here so we talk about a primitive temple a model temple a modern temple generic dungeons there's a pyramid so giving just a couple pages of stuff so we got some dungeon campaigns and there's other source books that are far more in depth and better for this sub subject material the dungeon master the dungeoneering guide comes to mind and the the spelunkers guy that was recently put out a couple years ago i mean all of these are ex grand examples of, of just that so when you look at that and, and uh, uh, this is very this last couple 10 pages or so the rest of it is basically giving you the the word and 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 set up to understand how the game itself should be, how your setting, how your how your interactions, how your social your social contract gets put up. I mean, uh, uh, there, there's a downside of a book like this because Jesus, like I can go into 15 different directions on it, and I that's where I'm starting to struggle. I'm trying to trying to not run this into a two-hour two thing. So I mean, when we look at the stuff like uh, keeping things uh, f fresh and keeping things uh, polite and 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 being mi uh, respectful and mindful. So if you're a guest in somebody else's house, remember you're a guest. You're not their their family. You're not their their second cousin. Even if you were, you should still be you know have some manners. So if somebody else hosts the game, be willing to to come in or a little early, bring some snacks. You bring something that you could contribute to the group, you know, or be willing to chip in money-wise so the group can get together, if that's how you guys want to do it, to have snacks or have somebody, buy, you know, want to make tacos or something like that. That's great. You know, here's some, you know, let me let me bring some of the ingredients. I'll bring the cheese and the hamburger, right? You know, hey, whatever works for you, I'm willing to help. Uh, and then be mindful that it is their home and their family's residence. Don't go off on and, and tromping around in areas that you shouldn't be in. Don't go investigating their their freaking linen closets and their cabinet, their their medicine cabinet, because that's that's just rude. It's just bad manners as a guest. Keep a control of your attitude, your mouth, your language. Be mindful of the setting too. So if you're at a you're at your buddy's house and your buddy's wife doesn't like foul language. Try not to use it. Try it really, really hard. Work at it. Keep your. Remember, you're, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're an adult in, in an adult setting that should be acceptable to everybody present. And, and then also keep in mind that when the session's done, take a moment to 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 offer to help clean up. Just put the stuff away. Help them re-put their room back the was when you started. Maybe some, you know, if there's some dishes to do. Volunteer to help with the dishes. I mean, that's always a winner for a lot of for for a lot of people with gain points. All you, this is, this is a guy that we, we like this, these folks around. Um, it's just it sounds like a lot of common sense, and yet it's things we a lot of people take for granted, especially if you're in a game group and you've been going for a while. And the hard part is is when you're new and you're going to somebody and you're trying to get involved in a new group. You have to be so mindful of your P's and Q's because you're on you're on trial in a way. You you are interviewing for a position and you want that position. You want them to want you to come back to, right? At least that's the idea. And, and then there's the then there's the uh, be gracious, be polite. Thank you very much. I appreciate what you uh, allowing me into the into your home. We had a great time. I was it was the it was the bomb. I'm looking forward to the next one. I hope I'm I hope I'm welcome to come back for the next one. Or I'm looking forward to the next one. You know what's are we planning? In, you know three weeks out next month first first Thursday of every month. Great. Uh, you know maybe next time you know we can have it at my house. You know be willing to rotate. Sometimes that's not. Sometimes player people have to choose the locations they do because of convenience. But sometimes the, the situation too. So a family that you know you, you've got a you got your kids and you got your spouse and your spouse doesn't play. Well, you gotta kind of be mindful of that too. You you bring in a group into your house. The that's how much disruption is that going to cause to your group? How much disruption to your house? And then of course there's the the opposite side of it. Sometimes in in, in 
not convenient for you to go and spend half a, half a day or half of your weekend at somebody else's house when you're married and got kids. Can't, that's why when I, we talk about, you know, when we were younger and we played every day or every weekend, but now we're older and we were lucky, many of us are lucky we play, you know, once, a, once or twice a year. I mean, it's rare for me to find, I, I just, it's just Brenda and I and the, these damn 100 cats and my YouTube channel. Anyway, it is what it is, guys. This is uh, it's a good book. Uh, we're down the round damn camera. This this is a good book, and, and uh, I really wish they had printed it a, a revised version that of it. You know, Wizards of Coast could have. But nowadays, fuck them. Excuse my French. The hell with them. Uh, anybody could come up with something like this, I suppose, and and rewrite it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to rewrite this or rewrite it something like it. But but this is a some that most of the material in here are topics and 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 common sense rules and and suggestions and ideas that are constantly bantered and and uh, uh, bantered around. Jesus, you know, from here it looks like a black cover. I know it's not. It's blue. Right. I love the. I love the. Yeah. It kind of looks blue or black, but it's not. Anyway, I'm Rick. That's a little missy. That's a little missy over there in the corner cleaning herself. Till next time.